Welcome back to In Business. When you are negotiating outside of your culture, do you feel at a disadvantage? Well, many do. Some cultures need time to understand you and get to know you. Some like to haggle, and some are very aggressive. If you do or would like to do business cross-culturally, then my guest, Bill Dennis, is your guy. Bill trains sales organizations on how to sell and negotiate cross-generationally and cross-culturally. If you'd like to join the conversation live and ask a question, call us at 905-848-5483 or 905-848-LIVE. Or you can tweet your question to <coughs> at David Wojcik or use the hashtag RTV in business. Bill, thanks for coming in. Oh, it's a real First of all, Bill, here. how do you get involved with cross-cultural and cross-generational negotiations? How did I get involved? <laughs> well, I spent my uh, whole career uh, uh, in uh, sales and marketing positions, and I found the last 10 years in particular <clears throat> that it was a real challenge to, to be successful in negotiating um, in Canada because there was such a multicultural change taking place and also there was the four generations. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided that uh, that's where I could make my biggest uh, contribution in terms of helping people be successful. D negotiating cross-culturally is, is so complex these days because we, we have so much diversification in our society and, and with so many different cultures uh, being resident in Canada now, how do we keep it all straight? Uh, how do we understand? Uh, do we do we just need to focus on a few basics? I know with the, when when you're dealing with uh, uh, Japanese, there, there's a certain way that you hand your business card to them, and they will hand their business card to you. Um, is that the kind of stuff we're talking about when we talk about cross cultural? negotiation and, and dealing cross-culturally? Well, there's 200 cultures in Canada right now, and we have the highest culture, uh, pardon me, highest immigration rate in 75 years. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so demographically, there's major changes taking place. Um, in terms of how to handle it, that was my really my main focus for the first four years uh, when I decided to focus in this area, was to demystify all of this. And I, fortunately, over that period of time, uh, made connections with people around the world who have this information. Uh, they were not focused on the sales and negotiating part, but I could take that information and, of course, orientate it to my particular area of interest, which was uh, cross-cultural and cross-generational um, negotiating. Uh, it can, if the first thing you have to do is demystify it. Culture can be uh, explained. It's, it's, there's nine dimensions. Every culture in the world is one of the, is a combination of these nine dimensions of culture. Once you understand culture, which is the first thing I do uh, when <clears throat> I train people, I then move them into uh, cross-cultural and cross-generational um, negotiating. And basically, you have to start by asking, what culture of negotiations did I come from? Mm -hmm. You see, there's, two, there's really two negotiation cultures, if I can focus on culture for a moment. Uh, one is a haggling culture, and one is a buying culture. Okay. Okay? <clears throat> and that's the reason there's a lot of uh, a misalignment between people when you have somebody from a buying culture, such as can uh, negotiating, pardon me, uh, culture such as you have in, in Canada where people t t tend to buy as opposed to getting into a lot of haggling. But when you go to many countries of the world, uh, that is not the way uh, business is done. Business is done through haggling. Right. And if you don't come from a haggling culture, um, you're really overwhelmed by this because you have, you just, you're dealing from apples, apples and oranges. They're just two different worlds. So, so let's take that, um, <coughs> let, let's take two cultures. We've right. got, we've got a, a Canadian culture, whatever the heck that is anymore. So we've got right. a Canadian culture, which is the buying culture. Right. And then we've got a haggling culture and there are many of them around, uh, many of them around the world. And, and you put the two together and now they need to deal with each other. Right. Well, who's who's right? Like, who do, how do you, how do you bring the two sides together so that they can negotiate with each other and and appreciate each other's differences? Well, it's not a that's a good question, and it's not a matter of being right or wrong. First of all, it's just a yeah. matter of being very different. And how you uh, <clears throat> how you bring that those two people together who are really from two different worlds of negotiating, absolutely completely different worlds, is that first of all for each of them to recognize the other person for what they really are dealing with. Secondly, is to have an understanding of the culture of that person, and thirdly is to have the knowledge in terms of how to negotiate with somebody who is completely on a different 
uh, wavelength in Euron term negotiating. For example, and most of the, by the way, there's 193 countries in the world, um, <clears throat> between 193, 196, depending on, on the, uh, but there's 193 depends countries. Depends on the week. You know, depends <laughs> on the week, but there's 193 <laughs> members of the United Nations, so I use 193. <laughs> And the majority of the cultures of the world, countries of the world, are from Hagley cult have, have Hagley cultures. Right. Um, and the Hagley culture, the idea is to uh, quote as a seller, quote a very high price, expecting the person to haggle you down. Right. Whereas if you're from a <clears throat> buying culture, such as Canada, uh, traditionally is the price is the price. The price is the price, give or take ten percent. Okay. And yet both parties, if you will, from both parties, the both worlds get very frustrated by the other because they don't quite understand the dynamics of what's going on when they're negotiating. Right. Um, because they don't understand what's really going on. So is the point not to bring the two sides together? The point is just to understand what culture the other person is coming from? It's twofold. First of all, you have to understand what culture you're coming from in terms of negotiating. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, understand the world. If you're, a, say, if you're a, a buyer culture, uh, then understand the other persons is from a haggling culture, so when they start doing things uh, like trial and uh, error offers, the things you've never experienced in your life before, you'll understand what's really going on. For instance, haggling <clears throat> to somebody from a buying culture would say, hey, they're trying to, they're trying to haggle on the price. Yeah. Actually, in most of these cultures, as a matter of fact, virtually all of them that have a haggling culture, they use haggling to do two things. One is to get the best price, but equally important to them is to get to know you. So the haggling uh, process to them is one of building a relationship with you as well as trying to see what your bottom price is. So as whereas uh, uh, North American culture, we would, we would have a discussion, we would talk, I would ask you questions about you, you ask a question about me, and we get to know each other that way. A haggling culture will haggle with each other to get to know each other better? Yeah, because you see, uh, in a buying culture, um, what you basically have taking place is decision driven. You want a decision. Yeah. In terms of getting this negotiation over with, uh, whereas when you're from a Hagley culture, there's there's the, the real tendency is no, not to have a decision, but to get to know you, and to once establish a relationship. Most of these Hagley cultures come from countries where no business is done until the, you and they and the other party have established a very solid relationship. Yeah. So, for example, if you're from Canada, with most people in business, you know, spend what. 10 minutes, 5 minutes, getting to know each other, then they move into, into business. <laughs> into bi yeah. Let's get, let's this, get, let's, let's let's get, get to done. negotiation. Let's get it done. Let's get the deal let's, signed. Let's get going. <laughs> Whereas if you're dealing with somebody from a haggling culture, they will take whatever time typically, and I mean any time, to, uh, to, uh, to develop a relationship with you before they will trust you. Because they come from a, as another issue is they come from a very slow trust culture typically. Whereas Canada has the fastest trust culture in the world. So when you're when you are with a uh, a haggling culture and, and and that's the style to get to know you, mm -hmm. I mean, how long a time are we are we looking at? Could it be anywhere from a day to a week to a month to whatever a year? time it takes? The really time is not. They will typically take whatever time it takes to get to really know you and see if they can trust you. Now that takes a lot of patience mm -hmm. on somebody who's from a uh, a decision driven, uh, if you will, uh, country. Or a culture, uh, that's so you have to have that willingness to do that upfront effort. So how the, do we know? How do we know? <coughs> see, I, already I'm in. I'm in buying. I want to get the deal done. Like, there I, you go. You see? Yeah. How do how do I know when the 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 individual is ready to do business? Is there a sign? Is there a signal? Well, basically, that's one of the things I very much cover. And uh, there's relatively few countries like Canada where you in effect you have this urgency to get a decision. You have uh, United States, you have Northern European countries, you have Australia, New Zealand, uh, you have to a lesser extent uh, Israel, and after that you can pretty much can say as a general uh, statement that every other country in the world is from, has a Hagney culture mentality. Right. And if you don't take your time, then basically nothing's going to haggle because you don't haggle with people from a Hagley culture, you probably aren't going to be very successful. And, and, and they probably won't respect you either. There's no respect at all because they'll think you're, you're trying to pressure them, which means they can't trust you, which means therefore nothing's going to happen because if they don't trust you, uh, no matter what you've got, within reason of course, they're not going to want it because they don't trust you. It all ties together. Uh, people, uh, trust is more important to them than doing a deal. 
Whereas, exactly. whereas in uh, in a buying culture such as uh, uh, Canada, it's a matter of let's get a decision, let's get a deal, and let's move on to and, the next situation. And, let, and let's move on. And speaking and of move moving on. on, we have to move oh, on. No, so, I've Bill, this. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, thanks very much for My coming pleasure. in and talking to us about cross-cultural negotiations. Lots more to learn about that. Are you looking for businesses that are in steady growth mode? If you are, my next guest may be able to steer you in the right direction. We will be back with more in business right after a few words from our sponsors.